Testing. Three, two, one. Desperate Women, video number one. Marion, Indiana, May 17th, 2017. I don't understand how this conversation came to play, but it did. He asked, could he have sex with her eight-year-old daughter? And she responds, yes, and it happens. Jennifer Han, 34, would allow her boyfriend, Nicholas Thrasher, 35, to do just that. I personally saw a YouTube video years ago where a girl I will call Mariah cried out. She asked her father, where was he? But I didn't know what was going on. I don't think anybody did. Only her mother did. The now 10-year-old Mariah, she was being raped two years repeatedly by her mother's living boyfriend with her mother's blessing. She would reach out and tell an adult at school in which the school contacted the police. The local police would show up at Jennifer's house and they started an investigation. Jennifer wanted the investigation to stop. She said her daughter was not telling the truth. Evidence was taken out of the little girl's room like undergarments and such. They would also have DNA from Nicholas. Jennifer even signed a quote safety plan unquote. The plan that would keep Nicholas away from Mariah. Jennifer would even move to Marion, Indiana and take Mariah and her other young son with her. Nicholas was there. The abuse continued. Mariah, still 10, was given a pregnancy test by her mother. Mariah was pregnant. Jennifer tried to take her to an abortion clinic. She told Mariah to tell them that she was pregnant by a 10-year-old classmate. The clinic refused to do the abortion. The sexual abuse continued. Mariah at this time had become greatly depressed, extremely suicidal, and she was even self-medicating with drugs. Three years later, Mariah's hellish physical and sexual abuse would end. She did give birth to a baby boy. But Nicholas was arrested and so was Jennifer. Nicholas Thrasher received 160 years, which he's trying to appeal because he says the sentence is too harsh. Jennifer Han received 20 years that she agreed to. I mean, did she have a choice? It sounds like she was giving a choice. I feel she should have got the same amount of time as her man. The girl, Mariah, she had been taken to a mental institution. Things far away was too dark for her. She was not doing well at all. She had a severe depression. I mean, she had given birth to her mother's boyfriend, baby. She hopes now to one day get a job so that she can help take care of her son, She's currently in foster care, and she's learning basic skills on how to be a parent. She's a beautiful young girl. I hope she has high self-esteem one day, the highest, and I do wish her well. And she does need to know what happened to her based on what her mother did and based on what a man that she never, ever has to see in her life again did. She will eventually work through that and get past that. And she needs to know that that does not define her at all. She has a whole life ahead of her. And I think she's going to do really, really beautiful things. Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 2009. Brandon Irving Helms, 34, was married to Marcy Lynn Helms, 38. The couple would move around a lot. They would finally settle in a condemned, abandoned home that has since been demolished. Marcy would tell the court she thought it was a great idea if their 8-year-old daughter, we will call Mary, to become her husband's concubine. So Mary, at eight years old, was Brandon's concubine. Brandon would repeatedly rape Mary. At age 14, she got pregnant. And 15, she had a very painful labor for two and a half hours on a table 
in a condemned, abandoned house. She delivered the baby, seeking no medical attention for her or her newborn. On May 8, 2018, Brandon would not let the police in. They were banging on the door, trying to get in. Someone had called. Someone had said something was going on in this abandoned home. The house was deplorable, not fit for humans to be in there. No water, no electricity on. The family tried to flee in their car. Brandon and his wife and Mary and the newborn daughter. When the police stopped the car, they would find four more children hiding underneath a floorboard in the car. Brandon Helms got 88 to 136 years. Marcy Lynn Helms got 18 to 36 years, and she has to do at least 18 years. Mary says she's so thankful that the police was called and that somebody checked on her. She may still have been subjected to living in that house and being raped daily. Florida, May 24th, 2012. They're referring to this woman as the Davenport woman, who is 29 and was currently pregnant in court by her boyfriend. They will not release her first and last name because they say her three very young daughters share the same last name as her. The oldest of the three girls was eight. She was at school and she refused to get on the school bus to go back home. She would tell the teachers there that her mother's boyfriend was sexually assaulting all three of them, the six and the five-year-old. They were removed from the home. In court, the Davenport woman, oh, she had a lot to say, but she did say, quote, Your Honor, all I'm asking is please find it in your heart to not put me in prison for 30 years, unquote. She said so much stuff, but she did say she, would, she was being physically and emotionally and mentally abused by her husband. That's why she let this happen. It was pretty much bullshit. She did receive 30 years in prison, the Davenport woman, but we do have her picture if we don't have her first and last name. Her boyfriend, Jamie Sauter, he received 50 years. Charleston, West Virginia, February 2015. Richard Smith II, 41, and his ex-girlfriend, Rosanna Thompson, 46, they used to live together in South Charleston when they started to film themselves sexually assaulting Thompson's infant granddaughter together. Yep, they were video themselves doing sexual things to a baby. They had since separated and hadn't been together for quite some time when Smith married. His wife, one day cleaning the house, she came across this video. She took a look at it and she saw what her husband was doing to a baby. She turned it over to the police. Come to find out it was nine more just like that, starring the same woman. In court, Thompson would say, quote, I'd like to ask God, my family, and everyone that knows me for forgiveness. I hold responsibility for my actions. I ask that you have mercy on me, unquote. Thompson received 10 to 20 years. And if she's released before then or after that, she has 50 years extended supervision. She got credit for 955 days that she had already spent in prison. And her ex-boyfriend, Richard Smith II, he got 700 years. Now, in all three of these cases, from Jennifer Head to Marcy Helms to the Davenport woman to Rosanna Thompson, all three of these women, they opened the door to let these sick perverts do this to their children and grandchild, I believe that they should have gotten the same sentence as the men in these stories, if not longer sentences. 
These women were not looking out for the welfare of these children, only looking out for their needs with this man. And that is sickening to me. I wish all these children the most happiness in their life. And I hope now that they're happy, I hope they can get past everything, especially Mariah and the eight-year-old girl, because they remember everything.